Our laws as it pertain to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell do you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Hey now, welcome everybody. We have had a few days of talking to clinicians and medical ethicists and whatnot, and we're going to take a different turn today, which is uh, quite welcomed, I must tell you. I am bringing, I am bringing in the host of Hollywood Raw. You can find the show at HollywoodRaw.com. Also follow them on TikTok at Hollywood Raw. One word, uh, a, a face that needs no introduction. Dax Holt is here, 11 years at TMZ, one of the more recognizable faces. Don't go to him yet, because I introduced the whole group here. Okay. Uh, you can follow Dax at uh, I'll Twitter, at, uh, at Dax Holt. He looks so sexy, and, too. Uh, <laughs> and, and somebody I'm said, telling you, you look good right uh, now. Somebody right on now. YouTube said, uh, Frosted Tips Dax. That's, I was like, that was that, my nickname. That was a long <laughs> time ago, years. long time ago. But uh, Adam Glenn uh, grew up in New Jersey, got hit the comedy scene, and then, I, you know, Adam, you've had multiple lives. I don't know how to even describe you. He 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 developed street journalism. You can follow Adam at, at Adam Glenn G L Y N. And Dax, what you don't know is now now bring the guys in for him if you would. What what you don't know, Dax, is uh, Adam and I. You can look at me out there. And, oh, uh, we have so, a little leg. So, There's a little so, leg. I, mean, I have to look at you in person. But <laughs> pretend I look I'm not right here. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, because it look, if we're not going to have the three of us, it looks weird when we're looking at each other. <laughs> yeah, uh, Adam and I went steady a lot, Dax. We we like hung mm -hmm. out way more than you know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not, a little jealous I, right I, now. You should, because I didn't re I didn't think about it. I, you guys have been doing some version of this show for quite some time, and I thought, oh man, Adam and I had a whole affair going that Dax doesn't even know about. <laughs> Adam, do you want to tell him now finally what what happened? Yeah, I mean, listen, every time. Dr. Drew was in New York. I would run into Dr. Drew. He, I was like, like the, every time. I was the greeter for him. Like so, every time. I, was, I'm in New York a lot, and I would always run to Adam on the street, and I would see him across from the is it Warner Brother office? Warner Brothers office. Yeah. And that that of course I couldn't go down that street without running into. But I would run into Adam's random places. I mean Bloomingdale's or yeah. something, and Adam and I run into each other. Well, that's I, Adam's the best of the best when it comes yeah. to I, he's stalking me. Guys I think. in New York. I had good radar on you. So oh, was, uh, did you? Woo. No, but I always ran into you outside the which is the the, the london hotel across yep. from the warner brothers office yep. and it was just every time he came to new york but that was like my goal for, through doing the job i always want my goal as a street journalist is to cross paths with people but somehow you you were the person i always cross paths with every time they came to new york you're just one of the many it's, it's so weird fun. susan dax's mic is muted for some reason so let's unmute that i think it's it's he's coming through on our mics um uh, yeah, and I remember once I was flashing in my head. There were many, so. many, many times I saw you that were just incidental, but there was one when we were uh, CeeLo Green was coming out of the. <laughs> I remember that. Remember this? Yes. Yeah, that was weird. I don't know why I remember that, but that was like the last time I saw CeeLo. I, mean, I think it's the last time anybody saw CeeLo. Yeah, I don't. I have not seen him in yeah, a long where time. Where did he go? It, that's exactly what he, I. He's so big, and then he right. just disappeared. He got in a little bit of trouble. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Because I, I always like CeeLo, and I think nice he's a guy. great musician, Super nice, nice guy. guy, and i um, sorry to hear he got in trouble. Is that something you covered on Hollywood Raw? Uh, we did not, because that, that was before. before. Yeah, uh, it was, but I don't know if anything happened from it. But he was, every time I experienced CeeLo on the street, one of the nicest guys. Like, yeah, fun, truly. cool. I've, yeah. You know, at the time, actually, you know, remember, he was one of the judges on The, the Voice. Voice. And yep. I remember singing for him on the street. I think that's <laughs> when I saw you. It was like, huh. I was singing for CeeLo Green on the street. So it's... Uh, See, I knew him from the K-Rock days. When he was the lead, lead Danger Mouse, or? Gnarls Barkley. Was Gnarls Barkley, that Gnarls was it. Barkley. And uh, and I like that band. I, that was one yeah. of the, like there's few bands. I, the thing about K Rock, my K Rock career, which was 35 years, I was exposed to every band, and you know, and I remember like a handful. Uh, one of them I just happened to fly Susan to Denver with uh, on Thursday, which was 311. They nice. were doing. They were very doing, cool. Yeah, Sorry, I, I'm messing I, with Sam. I've known those guys forever. And uh, and they were doing a special Halloween thing at at the hotel where they filmed The Shining, which I thought was kind of cool. And they, up I, in Estes Park. Uh, what's the name of the hotel? It's like it's like it's the Stanley, the Stanley, Stanley Hotel. hotel. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Zax's mic is still weird, guys. 
So the, weird. Am I am I right know. on that? Do I sound weird? Do you, you want me to crank it? I'm um, just next his... to you, so I can't really tell. I hear Adam <laughs> more clearly than I do. But guys, tell us more about Hollywood Raw. I want to hear all about it. I want you to tell people why they should listen. I want you to talk about your guests and uh, go have at it, gentlemen. Well, uh, you know, the, the thing is, so obviously you know us from TMZ for many, many years. We were there covering the biggest stories in Hollywood and having a good time. But I would say... What I really wanted to do when I left TMZ was instead of talk about celebs, I wanted to talk to them. So mm -hmm. that was really kind of the goal for me is have a good time, talk to celebs, get the interesting stories out of them. And, you know, Adam describes it so perfectly. He says we humanize Hollywood. And that's exactly what we do. We have these long format interviews with people, get the best stories out of them and as a side note, we break a lot of stories because of these amazing interviews. And we interviewed not just the celebrities themselves. We inter actually interviewed the bodyguards, the paparazzi. We've interviewed publicists, managers, so, people so who've made also, celebrities it's famous. It's also not just the human, the human piece, which is this is the part of I've always said when I've, I've treated lots of celebrities, which is they're just they're the same as everybody else. They just have special stuff that goes on in their life. But it sounds like you also want to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. that we knocked down the fourth wall of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do it over and over again. And I, I'm telling you, like, we've got the some of the biggest celebs have come on our show. You know, like there's not Tony Robbins doesn't do a lot of podcasts. He really he, doesn't. He came on our podcast and we had this amazing interview with him. Chatted. Tell me, tell me about it. Tell me what, what he said. What did you, what were you impressed with? What was unexpected i mean we were actually only supposed to have 30 minutes with tony that was the crazy part we were only supposed to have 30 minutes with him and then he just his energy he just keeps going and we had him for just about an hour mm -hmm. and uh i think just the major takeaways are just you know sort of his life and how he kind of like just his people think of him as this motivation guy but he's yeah. not really a motivation guy he's a strategist everything to him is strategy from life to how he lives his life to business and i think that's really there was a lot of just a lot of takeaways and then we have people like Mike, the situation who I, I'm sure uh, you kind of cross paths with. No, him. I know Mike well. <laughs> yeah. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah, but it's for, for us as journalists who've been working with him forever. It's but not just journalists, fans, fans, like legit fans. I, I was a huge Jersey Shore fan, so to have him on the show was awesome. For a guy who we've been covering for years and also have this candid conversation, because he's one of the celebrities that I think we kind of came up with. You know, we were in the. You know, when he was the biggest star in the world, because at one time, the Jersey Shore was the biggest stars in the world. Mm. We were I was one of the people in the airport trying to get him at the airport. And now to, you know, things have calmed down a little bit. But to have this like open, candid conversation for our podcast, it's like you're a fly on the wall and sort of like you're at a Christmas party with everyone in the industry. And then you're just kind of eavesdropping in these and, and industry. And we, and we ask you guys for one quick yeah, second. Yeah. Are we have we solved Dax's mic problem? This is our first time in this. We can still hear studio. him. We have three mics. We okay. can hear him. He's just he doesn't he doesn't have the boom that the other that two Adam of you has. do. So I'm letting okay. I'm yeah. letting so turn us work down. Out. Turn us down. But <laughs> but the other thing is restream has completely stopped. Restream just completely stopped. It's and moving over here. No. Oh, it just came back. I think it came. Just came out with Tom Cigar. Okay. Okay. Quick, finish up. Quick being the tech guy. Let us handle it. I, I'm just alerting you, just because it's our it's our virginal it's our virginal trip with this, and so there's gonna be little it's things. The first and, threesome yeah, here on the first table. First threesome I mean, I exactly. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. So, so, oh, I know it is. We, we're we're not on all the platforms for some reason. But go ahead, finish your story. Uh, I know no, I, I feel like I feel like our podcast is a fair like eavesdropping at a Christmas party with mm -hmm. everyone in the in the Hollywood industry. And you know, we also have for me, I have a lot of colleagues who are paparazzi. So I'm able to have these open conversations with guys who do what I do and just hear about their experiences from celebrities firsthand. I mean, these are the guys. They're not reporters. These are the ones who are actually breaking the stories. And we talk to those people and hear how they actually broke the story. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to mention. We don't just talk to celebs. We're not just a celebrity podcast. You know, we're talking to anyone that is interesting in the entertainment industry. We've talked to people who have started up paparazzi agencies, paparazzi themselves, managers of, you know, big websites or, you know, everyone, just anyone we think are interesting that have great stories. Yeah, people have actually made the people famous. Like this guy Shiraz, uh, he's got a thing called Fame by Shiraz. He was uh, one who years ago started doing these paparazzi videos and putting them out there and really was part of the- The rise of Kim K. The rise Paris. of Kim Paris, yeah. So, so it's, it's interesting to hear like how it was and what his his strategy was to make Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian famous. So, so I'm sort of clueless on a lot of stuff, right? Even though I know you guys, know a lot of people that no, you know, you're, you're following. And so I got to ask questions for one thing. You talk about paparazzi colleagues. I always thought of Adam as you sort of in that same, they really are. You were sort of that with a video camera, weren't you? I, I mean, I still am. I'm still okay. running so around. You, with, so yeah. you, 
Okay, so you're sort of a paparazzi, but you but you uh, but you were a paparazzi who was willing to have a relationship with everybody. Yeah, yeah. So for yeah. what I do, I do video interviews. So yeah. I have to actually engage with these people. Yeah. And it's funny, I don't even consider them, you could call me paparazzi, it's fine. But well, but I, I but it's it's weird as as from my perspective. It's yeah. like you're right, you're not that, but you're kind of that. It's like I, I'm sort of am, yeah. but I you know, I just it's so funny. I made up this title called street journalist. Yeah, I like that I better. Up. I like <laughs> it. I, I did it for my LinkedIn. That's all I did it for. So it sounds a little better. And uh it kind of worked with it and then other people are starting to consider themselves street journalists but for me i'm not taking photos so if you take a photo they can stand for 100 yards away and take right. a photo and not have to interact right for me i have a video camera and i'm not trying to get the person opening the door i'm trying to get these uh one-on-one -on -one really insightful interesting fun engaging yeah. interviews so i have to actually engage with these people so that's the exciting part for me because yeah. the adam would sort of open with uh hey can you help me out <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I work really hard here, and well, then I started yeah. seeing work really hard. Well, I was like, "Oh, I want to help this guy out." That's the thing, <laughs> like, Doctor. I mean, like the fact that you know who Adam is, yeah. but so does everyone else when they go to New York. I know like, that's like, right. Oprah said, "Hey, Adam, come, like <laughs> let's chat." I mean, it's, yeah. it's John Cena and Kevin Hart. Yeah. Everyone knows Adam, yeah. and that's yeah. kind of been the fun thing about that's good. getting to work with. But you know what, Doctor Drew? It's like if I ever want to do a talk show, as you know, if yeah. I reached out to Oprah's people, Shaq's people, Adam Sandler's people, and said, "Hey, I'd love to interview these." people as you know the first person picking up the phone say sorry we're not interested click and hang up the phone what i do is i try to cross paths with these people so i can say hey you're on my show let's do an interview real quick and then you know i've been doing it for so long these people are giving like me the it. opportunities and like you know it. they saw the interview and they saw the the growth and the attention they got from that interview and you know everyone does these a lot of the, if you do the Today Show, you do an interview for the Today Show if you do me i'm doing like the interview for the internet which you know potentially gets more views. Well, that's the other thing. Yes, it does, which I, I think we're really there now where, where internet digital production is, is, I don't know if it's exceeding because it's still hard to ca tra capture eyes and ears, but, but it has more power. I think mm, absolutely. Uh, I, John Stewart took some out of context things I said and put it up and made and said horrible things that started a John Oliver. Shit storm for me on Twitter. Jo what did I say? John Stewart, John Oliver on, on uh late, late, what's his show? Late, late show. What's his show? Uh, uh, help me. This week, this week, uh, tonight, tonight, whatever. Yeah, the, the, last, last week, tonight. tonight. Uh, shows you how, how much I'm concerned about it. <laughs> uh, uh, but but it started a shitstorm, and Michael Schallenberg, who's, who's sort of an opinion leader, and then I set the record straight, and it just stopped. And that that has never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. Usually once a television shitstorm gets going, nothing you can do about it. And I thought, oh, this is a, this is a moment. This is where there's a shift a little bit. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, back to Mike's situation, did he talk about his uh, substance history, which is just a glorious recovery now? Oh, he talked. Yeah. I'm d he had no off limits. That yeah. was the great yeah. thing uh, about Mike was he they said, OK, have fun. Go talk. I think the only thing that was off limits was the next season of Jersey Shore because it hadn't been released. <laughs> But everything else was like, yeah, we'll talk about going to prison, what he's learned, how he's changed, uh, so, you know, getting off substance abuse. Like, isn't, all he, of isn't it. he different? Isn't he, he, is, he amazing? He's great amazing. guy. Yeah. And yeah. We, but you known him across the everything, the, the narrative of his addiction. Yeah, we right? saw him rise to yeah. fame, his yeah. fall from fame, yeah. the, everything. And the guy gave a great interview. Yeah, he's a great guy. I, I did last season, Jersey Shore, when they were in a hotel in Las Vegas, and I had to go in there and do like an intervention on their. Their bullshit, which was more intense than I expected, actually. <laughs> and, and really, what you see is really what's going on with those guys. And um, and I, I got to know and really, I, I always knew Mike and I kind of knew Ronnie. I knew Ronnie. Uh, and I had, I guess I knew Jen too from, she used to come on Loveline over the years. Um, but I really ended up with an affection for all of them. And uh, and particularly Sally Ann, who produces the show. Who yeah. just, she's really the driving force behind it. And she's she's an ever present uh, part well, of the process. Well, if you have process. any connections with Snooki, let us know. We've been trying to get Snooki on our yeah. podcast. Well, I, I, she's I I do know her. I mean, I'll try. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> um, but uh, I have a couple more questions. So, uh, Adam, when you used to wait at the airport, why the American Airlines? Uh, uh, so it's funny. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Usually, like AA twenty three. Like I know the flight numbers by it. Um, <laughs> if you stand at like let's just say at JFK Airport and you go. Like just you see an LA flight coming in, you might as well if you stand at the end of, at the end of the terminal where you come out near the baggage claim, there's chances are very very likely that there is a celebrity on the plane. So I mean I get a lot of airport tips and airplane tips, and Americans just the one the most popular 
uh, flight that, you know, airline that the celebrities travel on. Um, so I mean, more doing private now, but especially as international, they, they go American international. Oh, that's interesting. And then finally, this, this notion of interviewing the biggest stars to me, this is where you guys immediately sat down and talking about people that are hugely famous whose names I'd never heard before. Mm -hmm. So, so what do, and, and so, and I, and I know that about myself. I know that I'm not really aware of what I should be aware of in terms of what's going on on social media. So what do I need to know? Who should I be following? Who are you guys interested in? Why? Help me out here. Well, are you looking for younger, like TikTok people? Because I, mean, I want to be just in the scene. I want to understand who's driving opinions and who's, you know, uh, super popular. Well, you could go listen to the Bryce Hall episode. That was a pretty good one. I Bryce mean, he, Hall. Bryce Hall is huge. He's okay. like right, one of the biggest it down. stars on TikTok. He came on, had a very candid conversation. By the way, super professional, showed up early. What was just yeah. an amazing guy to have on the podcast. Uh, so if you want to get into the TikTok young okay, millennial world, any more, he's a good any one. more than that? I, um, I mean, who else could we? For you leave gaming out. I, I mean, don't, I don't, I'll never do that. No, so. no. Uh, we're supposed to have ninja. <laughs> They're hunting. laughing at me. It's right. uh, <laughs> yes, it's not possible. You know, here, here's the thing. Th these people are all great, but I, I want to tell you the episodes that I think okay. I love yes, the yes, most after interviewing hundreds all of right, celebs. Beautiful, love it. I would say one of my favorite interviews was with Farah Abraham. <laughs> Yeah, what are your thoughts I was, on that? I was yeah. waiting for you to laugh at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, but listen. she was okay. awesome, so, Dr. So, Drew. So I am not surprised. And, and so, Susan, I want you in on this, too. Okay. Farrah, what, how would you characterize your relationship with Farrah, Susan? Um, well, she she kind of attacked no, you. No, no, and, forget that. And That's, I, I, whatever. I fought she, back. She, she and was then, just jumping on to stuff. Whatever. And then... I met her when she was kind of in a drunken stupor. No, 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 no. Did you were you friendly or not? <laughs> were you friends so with her started, or not? Yeah. Well, she started touching me and. and oh, we you were friends. Friends. My best friend. this room. No, no, you were friends. I didn't know about the touching. Yeah, part. then we were That's friends. That's the first time I'm hearing about that. <laughs> but, Tell us more, Susan. But, yeah, and then uh, after that, she um, she kind of jumped on the uh, Yasser bandwagon against against Drew, and then I yeah. guess I haven't talked to well, her you since because I'm kind of mad. I cannot blame anybody. For people that get into shit storms around fake mm -hmm. news, because it's I, so it's so persuasive to people to uh, be a part of the mob. Yeah, you know? but I just so, I keep an whatever, eye on her. But I, whatever. you know, Look, I think you if were I reached very, out, very very friendly with her. <laughs> Why do you guys want to book her? Is that no? We're just talking about. No, we're just talking episode. about. He, no, they she, liked meeting her, and I, I'm going to say we were. She was a friend. She tro well Susan. when she. When she met me, close, she though. decided she was my best friend. But you have to remember, we've known her for 10 years since they were little kids and they yeah. had little kids. So, yeah. but um, she, I mean, she's, she's a handful. There she, okay. there she's absolutely a handful, but she showed up professional yep, she on knows time. How to work. That's she right. was great. Oh that's yeah, right. I know she that. Knows how to, she knows how to work. She, she takes her work seriously. But does she, when she was with you guys, do you yeah. think she was just trying to be in character and just trying to get her name in headlines? And When she was with Susan? Yeah. Touching like, her? Yeah, well. So I didn't know about the touching. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> no, she was, we were at a uh, MTV <laughs> event, uh, yeah, I think, if I remember. Yeah, the VMAs or whatever. And, and she, we were just friendly with her. We were just friendly. And, and when, now she mm. drove, used to drive me crazy during those reunions. She would do she behave in ways that was she just was acting. Like again, she was that's my friend. that's part of the getting press. I mean, we see Kim Kardashian do it and stay in the headlines. That's, but but it's she a would. Talent. She. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, I like her. I I wish her all the best. I mean, we saw her again at another event right after that, and she came up to us and Kristen. What's her name? Remember, she was kind of. She was already yeah. fired by MTV, yes. but she showed up at the VMA. Yes, it was. And we I were right next to her on the red carpet. I fangirled about. Uh, David. Yeah, uh, but she she started like coming around us and wanted to be with us and no, meet the people around us because everybody was kind of shunning her. Okay, at that so point. she had just been fired at that point. But and, she still and, showed and up. Kristen, they invited her. What's Kristen's? Bell. Chris, Kristen, Kristen Bell Chris was Bell. with us. And and, and I, I, I love Kristen Bell and I wasn't sure how she was going to react to Farrah. <laughs> and so it was a little awkward, uncomfortable. Around that same moment, I saw. Shit's David Creek. Levy and w the woman that plays uh, Alex. 
Okay, uh, Alexis, Alexis. Out of the corner of my eye, and this was when I was a giant Shit's Creek fan before everyone else was a giant Shit's Creek. And I ran over to them like I was a fourteen-year-old girl with the Beatles, <laughs> and, and, I, and, and I pushed and, Farrah and, out of the I way. Did, and I freaked them out. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like "Oh my god!" And they, they were not used to that yet. And I thought, "Oh my god, what am, what is wrong happening? Me? What have I done? <laughs> what is wrong with me?" And I thought, I'm so, "I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm just so fan." And I didn't know at that point that David was the lead, was the creator and lead writer and he told yeah. me that i was like holy shit that is a hell of a responsibility you're doing an amazing job and i forget the woman that plays alexis anybody help me with that uh, i forget and, her real yeah, name wouldn't speak a word to me after i figured her out so badly <laughs> so, so that was but anyway so let's finish with farah i said i told her when she was i don't know if she quit or fired i wasn't involved in any of that it was sort of a impasse with mtv i told her i would miss her that i enjoyed working with her and that she was challenging many times and, and really drove me a little crazy sometimes, but that I would really miss her. And I really do. I really miss her. And and if she were to come back, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. So that's just my my two cents on her. So fairy you liked. Anybody else? Um uh, Brooke, like we said, Brooke Hogan. Brooke Hogan's our, amazing. Recent episodes. Brooke Hogan, who's been through a lot, you know, between her mother and her. We should her book father, her, her for us here too. Uh Brooke Hogan is a really, really interesting person yeah. that I don't think really gets the uh yep. We don't discuss her and people don't talk about her enough or as much lately, but mm -hmm. she just came out with new music. That's great. But she was just so candid and open and, you know, we, she's, there's, there's nothing, she's very willing and open. Well, she's, to she's down to everything. earth. So down mm -hmm. to earth, but also mm -hmm. very normal. Like her approach to everything is just, it's but like she's. I, no one knew, but she, she talked about on our podcast that she worked as a cocktail waitress after the height of her reality fame mm -hmm. and she moved to Nashville didn't have anything to do. She was, and she went to the JW Marriott and it was a cocktail waitress for six months of her mm -hmm. life. And she said it was the best job she's ever done. Interesting. And I think that is, that is a very hard thing for celebrities to do, to go be in the public eye doing something that's not in the entertainment industry. Yeah, doing and something that's just a job. Because shame you on mm -hmm. social media. And she's like, I loved it. And everyone would come up and say, why, why, what are you doing here? You've got your dad's money. You're a reality star. Why are you here? And she said it was great. I loved it. And she'd never talked about that anywhere else. And also the uh, restream is setting me straight. I was saying David because that's the name of the character he plays on Schitt's Creek. Of course, it's Dan Levy I was actually talking about. But that's how deep in I am to the characters on Schitt's Creek. <laughs> I, I, can only, I can only call them by their character names. So what what... I mean, you guys have been in this business for a long time, right? Uh, and, you know, I wrote that book about narcissism. And we also, in that, in that book, wrote about journalism and media and how celebrity media is an inexpensive way to, to do journalism to catch eyes. Oh, there it is, the mirror effect. And how do you guys, that, that was 10 years ago. How do you guys figure into the evolution of celebrity reporting and celebrity media? Because celebrity it certainly hasn't slowed down any. And the, the landscape of celebrity, so-called, has expanded because of things like TikTok and social media and whatnot. So what are your, what are your thoughts about that? What, what is it you're doing? How, where is it going? Do you have any think, thinking about that ever? Go ahead. No, I mean, it's interesting for me because I'm very active on the streets as a journalist. When I first started, you know, over more than 10 years ago, 12, 13 years ago now, it's, uh, you know, there is that conversation like there is the celebrities and the paparazzi are very separate. Mm. Now we're seeing more and more of these celebrities working with the paparazzi, yes. set up shots and all that stuff. Yeah. People always ask me and like, why are you here? Get up. I'm like, listen, I'm here because they tell me. So there's that conversation between the two from a celebrity DMing a, a photographer saying, Hey, I'm going to be here tonight. Come shoot me. And then also it's social media, you know, the outlets, it's weird. The outlets aren't really buying as many photos anymore because they don't have the money, but also what they're doing, they're taking the photos from Instagram and the celebrity, the, the, the celebrities themselves are able to break their own stories. Oh, so they're the, the content media. providers now. Exactly. Yep. So they wow. are the content providers. So do so you guys, do you guys see yourself as, as assistants in that? Like you're going to help them deliver you know the, like you have because adam you have this relationship with them where, where you could literally say can i help you out yeah no <laughs> you know? it's true it's uh, i mean that's i always think about it i mean sometimes when a celebrity does an interview i like i said earlier i said if you do my 
three minute interview on the street, I yeah. guarantee it's the biggest interview you do all day because I'm doing it for the internet. Okay, I Susan, we got to go out in the front yard here outlets. with Adam after the show. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Drew, it's funny you say that because there, that's one thing that people have been coming to us to, to do an interview on our, I'm not, our podcast. I'm not surprised. Because not surprised. W we aren't ET or Access or TMZ. Like we don't have an affiliation with any of them. So when we get a big interview, everyone picks it up. Of course. Yeah. And so, you know, like we got the first interview with Kristen Doty after she was fired from Vanderpump Rules because it's a one-stop shop. Come talk to us. We're gonna we're gonna have an honest, real conversation. We're gonna put your feet to the fire, but we want to know what you've learned. You know what this experience has been like for you. But everyone will pick this up because you're on our platform. Yeah, and I just actually did an interview with Conor McGregor about uh, a little bit more than a month ago now. Interesting. This was right after the VMA incident. Right after the machine gun Kelly at the VMA when he got into the altercation with him. And it's funny, I saw Connor the next day on the street in New York City, and this is a very big interview. Everyone was trying to get a comment with Connor McGregor, and I said to him, like, you know, we had to we we had to talk about the machine gun Kelly thing, but I don't wanna, you know, my thing's about relationships with these people, and I'm just not trying to throw too much uh, gas on the fire there. Obviously, we need to address it, but there's, I don't wanna dive into it more and more. He addressed yeah. it, but we're you're not, you're not trying things. to get the gotcha. Exactly. Yeah, it's not gonna make it worse. And it, wor and it actually worked where we were able to change the the Google searches a mm -hmm. little bit, where it was like, okay, we calmed it down, we addressed it, boom, yeah. next story about Connor. So that, no one really talks about it as much. That's exactly what I was just talking about in terms of uh, digital media affecting television. It, it's it's not a, it's not even, I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna call it a two way street yet. It's, it's really digital is the, where it all comes from now and the television is sort of using that or taking off from it rather than television driving things. Um, and did COVID-19 of course affected everything, but I guess I would ask how, or was it seriously affecting what you guys do? No, we actually got more guests. Yeah, it was great, <laughs> it was great yeah. for us because mm -hmm. everyone was at home. So, mm -hmm. Hey, Skype us, join us and come talk on the podcast. We got some of the best interviews we've ever had during COVID. We had this amazing, Annalyn McCord interview where I didn't know much about Annalyn. I obviously knew her from 90210 and stuff, but she came on and our conversation went in a very different direction. It started with how she got into the industry and acting. And then we got into her past and the sexual abuse that she suffered at a young age. Very common. And this, this interview ended up lasting like an hour and a half. We had to split into two episodes because it was so good. We got off that episode and we're like, this is some of the best podcasting we have ever done in our entire life. Yeah, that you're going to find. I mean, that's what my research shows. That's That kind of stuff is in there all over the place. Just if you ask about it, people will talk about it. And and the way to frame it always is this is a common thing. I wonder if you've experienced it. And, and, and we weren't going for it. Like that was not, not a topic we even had on our radar. Yeah. And one thing led to another, and she just opened up yeah. and started talking. Well, and I'm, it's good that's news. What happens a lot? It, yeah, it's good. It's good news that that stuff's being talked about because people should be aware of how common this stuff is and the impact it has, and what people do to recover. I, I'm sure. I'm sure she had a recovery story too. Oh yeah. To yeah, she's she's had a lot of yeah. going talking to the the abuser and oh boy. and really trying to get it off of her chest. Yeah, I think Tom Arnold was the first person to really talk about it publicly, and you know his whole story. No, I don't. He was sexually abused by somebody in Iowa and, and went out there. It was a teacher, I think, and uh, really publicly outed the guy. And it was, it's never that great for the person that's the victim to confront the perpetrator. It's not, not yeah. a, it's really what it does to your nervous system that has to be healed. And there's, there's treatments for that. And speaking of traumatic incidents, you guys have any thoughts about Alec Baldwin? I feel so bad for the guy. Yeah, that, that's a tough story. That's a really tough story. Mm -hmm. it, we, we actually just put up a video up on our TikTok page where, you know, everyone wanted to get a comment from him. And finally, the paps were there and he said, okay, I'm not going to give you a comment, then gave a four minute comment. I know, I saw that. <laughs> well, and his wife was freaking out. His wife out. was freaking yeah. And yeah. You, you could tell he was like, no, I want to talk. Like, Hilaria, back up because yeah. I want to have this conversation with people. You know, this is this is a tough situation because when you're handed a gun on set mm. and you're an actor, you are trusting someone else. You're trusting that prop provider that it is a safe gun. The crazy part to me is this had to be the specific scene that yeah. he is pointing a yeah, gun in yeah. the direction of a of a camera operator, a director Oof. of photography, a director. Oof. Like that's not common to point directly at a camera. So like I don't know how 
the moon's lined up for this one, and I could not imagine having killed and, someone. And oh my god, I, I I knew immediately how bad he would feel and how horrible. It's just what a it's a horrible accident. The problem is everyone wants to put a response, you know, as though as though somebody could have done it differently. And for, it's just so awful these situations. But um, it, I, I was fearful. That, that, let's analyze his interview for a second. When he was saying it's a one in a trillion chance, I was thinking. Yes, that's right, but it makes it feel like you're deflecting. Yeah, which was which was I, again, I felt even worse for him then because I was thinking, oh my God, it, it is a one in a trillion thing. But him him saying it makes it seem like he's deflecting it to some some, you know, uh, some yeah people you know, great magnet chance. You know, if you read the comments, people are not giving him any compassion. That's kind of the surprising part, and I think maybe that's because he hasn't always come across as like the nicest person. History, yeah. So yeah, so his history has like made it hard for people to necessarily like him but i'm like guys have some compassion for well, this guy what's happening That's what is i love about dax he's always the nice one like on <laughs> TMZ, we could always depend on him to see good in people yeah even when we'd show those time. those scandalous pictures of us he'd hold them up in the back of the room and you'd be going oh my god i can't believe he showed those pictures <laughs> oh when we were on the beach yeah. oh yeah i wasn't, I wasn't looking so good Dude, have you seen how jack dr yeah, drew that was an awesome so photo funny. somebody so on the uh, restroom said a dr Dr. Drew's Hollywood name is Guns and Buns. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. The guy, like, he wears a suit. You can't tell. He's got gigantic that was, arms. That was, a, I still have genetically big arms, but that was like 12 years ago, I think. I know, it was like right that. after your dad died, and we were all, like, yeah. just passed out on after the funeral, like, passed out on the beach and mm -hmm. in our... Does that make and, you feel bad, Dax? She's she's, drink, she's digging it and in. And then go, oh, there's <laughs> paparazzi. Well done, right? honey. Like, how great were his arms, though? Well, at least Susan. you called oh. us to yeah, tell you, us. Yeah, like, I didn't. Yeah, it was. We right. didn't know. Listen, we, it was this fine. was back in the day when we weren't really aware of this stuff. So. But, but but what happened was we were at I guess well we we were there with Four Sarah seasons. Palin. Mm -hmm. It was at Four Seasons in Maui, right? And I didn't know that that's a big paparazzi hangout. And my son and I went out in the water. And we saw there's a there's a grassy knoll sort of thing just I guess north of the hotel, and I was like, look at those guys, all those lenses, <laughs> and and then, and my son goes, I think they're looking at us because they're all you're all sort of pointed in your direction, like oh crap. So later I got my camera and I went over and started taking pictures of them, and they ran away. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. I, I swear to situation. God. It that's gets, interesting. It gets awkward. That's but what that's, I do. I'm like, get away from my kids. That was a great photo though, of you. I mean, that's like one like, do you have that framed in the house? I know. That's, <laughs> a, that's a great photo. I know. And then there was a hot chick next to him. It looked like he was licking her ass. What? Well, I yeah. don't remember that. I don't remember that you didn't either. See that part? And it's there's an me behind him, like dragging myself out of the water. Oh, that was a different picture. They, they, they they're think they're thinking the one where I was by myself. They clipped it. All right, so let's take a little break. We've been talking for a while now. This this has been zooming by. Um, we will take some calls off uh, Clubhouse if you guys want to raise your hand. We are taking only calls for Dax and and uh, Adam, so make sure your calls are pertinent to what they do and who they've interviewed and questions you have for them. Uh, and we uh, again, the show that we want you to see is Hollywood Raw. And one more time, guys, how easy is it for them to get it? Where should they go? What's the easiest thing? Just go to HollywoodRaw.com. That's Hollywood the Raw. easiest com. spot. You can go to our YouTube from there. You can go it's to like our right iTunes now. page. Okay. I mean. We have links there to every platform you could possibly want to watch Hollywood Raw on. Look at look at Adam. He looks so stately there. He looks like yeah, John, right? John Kennedy Such Jr. A, like, yeah. <laughs> Vote for me. Yeah. All right, exactly. That's what it looks like. A yeah. bit. Adam Guerrero. <laughs> <Guerrero. laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back after this. I want to give a shout out to our good friends at Blue Mics. If you've heard my voice on this show any time over the past year, including right now, you've been listening to Blue Microphones. And let me tell you, after more than 30 years in broadcasting, I don't think I have ever sounded better. But you don't need to be a pro or have a fancy studio to benefit from a quality mic. You may not realize it, but if you've been working from home or using Zoom to chat with friends, you probably spend a lot of time in front of a microphone. So why not sound your best? Whether you're doing video conferencing, podcasting, podcasting, recording music, or hosting a talk show, Blue has you covered. From the USB series that plugs right into your computer to XLR professional mics like the mouse or the Blueberry we use in the studio right now, bottom line, there's a Blue microphone to fit your budget and need. I can't say enough about Blue mics, and once you try one, you will never go back, trust me. To take your audio to the next level, go to drdrew.com blue. That is drdrew.com B-L-U-E. 
Anyone who's watched me over the years knows that I'm obsessed with Hydrolyte. In my opinion, the best oral rehydration product on the market. I literally use it every day. My family uses it. When I had COVID, I'm telling you, Hydrolyte contributed to my recovery, kept me hydrated. Now, with things finally reopening back around the country, the potential exposure to the common cold is always around. And like always, Hydrolyte has got your back. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity, my new favorite, starts with their fast-absorbing electrolytes and adds a host of great ingredients Plus, each single-serving easy-pour drink mix contains 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 300 milligrams of elderberry extract. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity comes in convenient, easy-to-pour sticks that rapidly dissolve in water, make a great-tasting drink, has 75% less sugar than your typical sports drink, it uses all-natural flavors, gluten-free, dairy-free, caffeine-free, non-GMO, and even vegan. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity is also now available in ready-to-drink bottles at the Walmart next to the pharmacy, or as always, you can find it by visiting hydrolyte.com slash Dr. Drew. Again, that is H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash D-R-D-R-E-W. Be sure to use the code Dr. Drew 25 for a special discount. Here with my daughter, Paulina, to share an exciting new project. Over the years, we've talked to a ton of young people about what they really want to know about relationships. It's difficult to know who you are and what you want, especially mm. as a teenager. And not everyone has access to an expert in their house like I did. Of course, it wasn't like I was always that receptive to that advice. Right. No kidding. But now we have written the book on consent. It is called It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward, and it explores relationships, romantic relationships, and sex. It's a great guide for teens, parents, and educators to go beyond the talk and have honest and meaningful conversations. It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward will be on sale September 21st. You can order your book anywhere books are sold, mm -hmm. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and of course, your independent local bookstore. Links are available on drdrew.com. So pre-ordering the book will help people, well, raise awareness, obviously, and it'll get that conversation going early so more people can can notice this and spread the word of positivity about healthy relationships. So if you can, we would love your support by pre-ordering now. Totally. And as we said before, this is a book that both teenagers and their parents should read. Read the book, have the conversation. It doesn't have to be awkward. On sale September 21st. Hey, I'm back. Sorry about that. I'm uh, typing some information. I'm watching you guys on Restream. We are going to go out on uh, Clubhouse in just a second. We, of course, got Dax Holt and Adam Glenn here from Hollywood Raw. And I was just telling them, why, why aren't they? They should be interviewing you guys on Extra and ET and things. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Because if, if I were producing those shows, I would think, oh, yeah, this would be cool to get these guys in here and talk about not just what you've done, because you're you've been figures in the media that they are reporting. And you've got some interesting interviews and interesting stuff I mean, to talk about. They've all covered our podcast. They've all covered our podcast. I think it's also, there's so many, especially in our industry, there's journalists and there's reporters. Reporters just hear what it is and they're just kind of puppets on TV telling you what's going on. Right, for right. What we do is, you know, we're journalists. We're trying to find the story, break the story, find uh, an interesting, I mean, on the way here, I'm I'm, I'm doing a story. So it's uh, it's just what I do. It's my it's how I make my money. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, I'm breaking a big story. uh I mean, Ooh. should I tell you? Oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, tell oh, me, oh. I'm it's getting a, interested. So in last night, uh, last night, Drew, hopefully you're interested in this. So Kim Kardashian right now, the big story that she went on a date, allegedly, with Pete Davidson last night. And, I heard um, some rumors about that. Which is crazy because there's no way that Kim Kardashian's in New York. And how does she go on a date in New York and there's no paparazzi chasing her? How did they get to Staten Island and were not photographed? Is that where they were, Staten Island? They were, the date was in Staten Island. So... Where she was before, Kim Kardashian was at Zero Bond. Have you heard about Zero Bond yet? No, Zero Bond that? is like the new Soho house. It's more exclusive. Oh, yeah. Elon Musk threw a party I, there. I, I didn't know what it was called, but I knew there was something like that yeah, flying it's, around. Yeah, uh, it's like the new hotspot in New York. Zero. Uh, Elon Musk just had his birthday party there. Kim where, Kardashian where is it? goes there. It's on Bond Street. It's Zero Bond. So it's Bond like Street. the village? It's uh, Nolita. It's actually down the street. Uh, it's Nolita. Um, not Nolita far is. from the village. It's uh, okay, let's right go. off Broadway. Okay. So, I want to go have oh, a it's party. A good spot. Yeah, it's, it's a very <laughs> well, exclusive I'll market. Forget table. that cold plunge, Adam. I want to go do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. Zero bond <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Kim Kardashian's there. She's inside. And basically, her security guard came out. And there's probably about 15, 20 camera guys waiting outside and fans. 
the, her security guard, her head security guard goes over to the paparazzi and goes, listen, I need to have a meeting with you guys. I want to talk to you guys and say how things are going to be moving forward. Kids, Kim's going to be here in New York for a few days. So the camera guys go, all right, what do you got to say? So he brings, oh, no, guys, everyone, come in line, come in, come in, come into a circle. So they all get into a circle. As the security guy is talking to him saying, all right, trying to like clear the air with the paparazzi, they sneaked her out a side door on Broadway mm. and they snuck her out and that's how they got her to broad uh, to mm. Staten Island mm. with no paparazzi chasing her. Wow. wow. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. And I wonder who's who insisted on it being no paparazzi. It was Pete or Kim and why? Because Kim like thrives off that stuff, right? Yeah. Well, you thrive off it until you actually want some peace and quiet or yeah. to slip away and have a date without now, people watching. I, I'm a Pete Davidson fan, but I saw somebody tweet or Instagram or something saying that Pete Davidson, you have a, you have a date with Pete Davidson when, when you want to piss off your ex. <laughs> and, and I thought that was kind of funny. That's actually true. <laughs> and is that what she was doing or does she actually like Pete? I think, I mean, that, me and Dax have different I have a very different this. opinion on this. I think oh. this is a very good publicity stunt on both their parts. They uh, well, both sure. of them know how to get press and attention. And so to me, you go to Not Scary Farm at Knott's Berry Farm, and then you hold hands and pictures come out and it turns into a huge thing. And How would you get around Not Scary Farm? The place, it's so crowded and stuff, you know what I mean? Exactly, well, you go you to a go place, a you know that people are gonna take your photo. Oh, like, I see. An amusement park is the perfect place. I see. You're in line, they bring you to the front, you sit down on the ride, and there's 40 cameras because people standing in line see you and take photos. Got it. So you go to a public's place, it leaks out. It looks natural. It looks fun. I see. And then next thing you know, you you're sneaking around. Susan, are you each taking other. notes? You taking notes on this? Uh -huh, with <laughs> yeah. my new boyfriend. We didn't know you can do that. that would create quite a thing. <laughs> or with your new your new girlfriend. Nobody knows who I am unless you're with me. So that's good. I'm just saying, even if it were you and me out there at uh, the car land at Disney World or whatever, <laughs> we get noticed everywhere. But people. Are People we don't get cool. to the front of the line, though. I must tell you, we sit in line with everybody else. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. the front of the line part is what actually I was responding to. Oh, okay. So Sorry. that would be nice. I was thinking about something else. It's actually interesting about the Kim K <laughs> and Pete, uh, the the photo. Why was there only one, like the few photos there? They're, they're at the music. You think there'd be more photos? Just there would be more photos out there than that means that they were there for five minutes and left. That's what that means. To strange. Dax's point. Yeah. yeah. To Dax's point. They 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 did. I think it their bodyguards a... are good at what they do. Sound pretty good. Uh, we too. met we met Chappelle's I, bodyguard the other night too. I think Kim is good at what and, she does. And by the she way, she is the queen of publicity. You want to report on something? You should report uh, on the uh, Saint New New Orleans event uh, with Chappelle and Rogan and Segura oh, and so uh, good. Jeff Ross. The, it was amazing, and and the enthusiasm of the crowd was like nothing I've ever seen. And Dave was great. They were all great. They were just great. And the, but the Greg, crowd Tom, was so Jeff appreciative. Ross. That uh, I don't know. I felt like that was some again. There's certain during this pandemic. There's certain I things I I just jumped out of me, and that was one of them. That those guys got up, said what whatever they wanted to say to be funny. They were trying to be funny, guys. That's it. Be funny, and that the audience was you know twenty thousand people and were on their feet and so appreciative for hours and hours. It was yep. good. Um, so let's take some calls here and see what people want to ask you guys. So I'm going to just go straight down the line here. Uh, again, if you're on Clubhouse, you'll be streaming on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Rumble. Are we in Rumble today too? Facebook? Yes. Okay, on all the platforms. Uh, let's see who this is. We... So you guys can say whatever you want. We're on Rumble. Let's go. I don't Are we on YouTube I also? I don't even know what Rumble is. <laughs> yeah. Rumble's uh... a... <laughs> we on MySpace too, guys? Freedom yeah, of speech. <laughs> uh -huh. we, get, we keep getting censored on YouTube for using... Oh. Like, the COVID words. stuff? Yeah, yes. about medication words. words. Yeah, you're not allowed to use certain words. They're not allowed to come out of my mouth. And if they do, I go into YouTube jail. Uh -huh. uh, it's happened. That we've we've almost lost a channel twice. Okay, wow. so whoever... Because Drew is a bad guy. Hinda Binda. <laughs> Hinda Binda, I think I've lost you, so I'm going to continue. Hinda Binda. Binda to talk with uh, Dean DeMay, Dean, see if you can come on up here to the platform to speak. I, you had your hands up, so I'm seeing what you guys are doing. Uh-oh. Hmm, it's funny on Clubhouse that nobody's, nobody's sort of coming up to the if anybody podium. has their hands up, just click on all of them and then wait till they're in and then call on them. Yeah, we could do it that way, Yeah, because like you can just put everybody with their That's hand an up. idea. And then they just sit there, and then when you call on them, they, you know. All right. Uh, Josh, you have a, a question for... Dax and Adam. Yeah. Um, the uh, Alec Baldwin uh, story is really kind of creeped me out. Um, I know I've, I've read the story. I know that he didn't know that he had a live round in the gun. He pointed it at someone and pulled the trigger. 
Um, it kind of reminded me of the old, you know, Brandon Lee mm -hmm. uh, shooting from The Crow. Mm -hmm. This was uh, 1994, I think. So almost 30 years ago. And it has that kind of, this is, I, I feel like this may never be settled. I feel like it could have an air of, because Alec Baldwin, Al, Alec Baldwin is so huge that I feel like this is something that may never really get settled. I feel really, really bad for him because I really, really like him. So what, do, what do you mean by settled, Josh? I just mean that I don't feel like anyone's going to ever know. I mean, what evidence can they find? Oh, that's I gonna, see. You know, do, 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 you know what there I mean? would not be. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Let's see what these guys say. There, in other words, like no, no blame ascribed, right? Which is well, the, there's the way someone it is. that put a live round in the gun. So there's going to be someone that has to be responsible for this because there, there's a life now that's been taken because of this accident. But but we don't know, but maybe that was a gun that was, but somebody was there. I heard they were you know doing target practice with guns the evening before. Maybe yeah, it was- Yeah, but a, who does target practice with I, guns I don't know. that are on set? I, I don't know. Like, and maybe they, were, maybe they put it down somewhere where you know non-cold stuff goes and somebody picked it up and said, oh, that's that, the gun for the next scene. And I, I like a, a comedy of errors, let's even, put it that Yeah, way. even if it was a, a huge error on someone's part, there has to be a consequence for there well, is now a life that has been taken there, because there will of be. your lack of judgment or your lack of caring. It, it's going to be it's going to be under the category of sort of negligence, yeah. right? That, that's really where it's going to go. Which is that, that to me, that's just the saddest thing when negligence results in. Uh, it's just oh, horrible. I'm just curious how it's going to change movie making going forward. You know, the the is there going to be like a police officer on? I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do going forward for the well, given and stuff. given how insane the sets have become around COVID. I can just imagine that there'll be some similar kind of weird structural bureaucracy that goes in place now for guns and ammunition. Yeah, they're and, more worried about and, COVID than whether yeah, or not I was there say, was a bullet and, in the gun. And probably that's where their energy should go to something like that, right? Gun safety is really important. They, they've gone so far overboard with COVID. But it is interesting that you hear all the people that were on set saying that they weren't following protocols and they were there was but do, do you hear that explicitly issues. yeah but you hear vague like oh and then they had the big walk out to... in the morning and they were angry I, people and, and... nothing worse than a disgruntled employee for a source of good information you know what i mean i mean i just it's biased mm -hmm. already i just i just i don't like people condemning look he may be responsible we already talked about how his interview looked a little bit uh, wish he hadn't done that uh but I hate people condemning him. We're not judge and yeah. jury. You know what I mean? We How let, is let he them responsible? Do the yeah, I wouldn't bring I the wouldn't gun put loaded the to responsibility show. Responsibility on him. Even if you, even if you didn't like his politics, or don't, I mean, don't don't do that. Don't be a part of this. Let's let's stop doing the mob stuff. You know, right. which is another thing. The the mob action of social media. Do you guys have any opinion about that? Do you like it? Does it? No. Do you use Who it? Likes the do you get involved <laughs> with no it? No one likes the cancel culture. Good. All right. Cancel, good. It, the media yeah, I like that. Into it though. You know, that's what it is. You know, the media is it's trying to make money they need to make entertainment either you like them or you root for them or you don't like them it's you wonder if there would be this much press if it wasn't on someone who wasn't out baldwin out baldwin someone who's had some battles public battles with a lot of people in politics and you wonder if now some outlets are saying you know what i want to throw more gas on the fire because it's out baldwin well they're just, they're just sort of they I, the 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 primitive and unfortunately lower human motivation is to give him a taste of his own medicine see how do you like it that's disgusting, everybody. Don't do that. It's a horrible tragedy. Let's just deal with it as such. That that's it. He'll never and, and by the way, what's whatever happened to the day? You know, I had a really interesting experience with my daughter uh, with this book we wrote. She and I have different points of view. Okay, not vastly different, but different. And in the in the course of uh, promoting the book, I got to really understand her politics and her point of view and her worldview. And I and it was it was important for me to get my head around it. And I ended up admiring it. I admired the contract. I admired what she stood for. I admired what she was doing. I didn't agree with it, but I could also admire it at the same time. Whatever happened to that? It was such a unique experience in today's world. I thought we got to do more. Oh, there's the book. Go get the book, everybody. Uh, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Is that, does that feel like something that's been missing? Just admiring different perspectives? Yes. Being yeah, able to absolutely. not, not want to destroy different perspectives, well, but disagree and say, I admire your point yeah, of view. It's I'm letting go of the generation gap. I, yeah, yeah. I think people have forgotten like, we can all be different and that's okay. What? You know, like I, know. I want, I, and I want comedians to go on stage. 
and say funny stuff, even if it offends people. I want that because I wanted to. I want to be offended. They should be the one group of people that can say stuff and everyone laughs and then moves along with life because you're getting rid of comedy. And the comedy, you got the most important part is they come, they were there to be funny. Sometimes you know, it doesn't hit, but yeah, yeah, you should interview some comedians. You haven't really interviewed comedians yet, have you? We've had some. We've had I a mean, couple. We've had a couple. Who'd you yeah. have? Uh, I mean, we had Hannah Berger <laughs> on. Hannah Hanna Berger, Polly Shore. Holy oh, sure. Sure. Uh, get, I think you might want to get Tommy Lee. Get, get some people with some big podcasts. We had Tom Arnold. Oh, Tom. Tom Arnold, yeah. Tom, good. It's uh, Tom's one of my favorite people. You know what? Yeah. Actually, would you say from your experience, though, have comedians been your favorite interviews or maybe you ex they're, they're, you expect a lot more out of them? Like, because you feel like they have to perform. Like, what is your... No, 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 no. I, I, I insist they drop the shtick, right? Uh, if I'm going to talk to a comedian, they cannot launch into their comedy all the time. They have to be open and honest, but they are funny people. So they'll say funny stuff. That, Sometimes. And, well, and it's never more funny than when they're being poignant, right? Yeah. Because of the juxtaposition. And, and Sometimes. So, what do you Sometimes mean? they're what are you not thinking? funny. What do you think? <laughs> what are you, what are you <laughs> when you interview about? them, yeah. Like who? Who is that funny? <laughs> like, well, Jay Moore is the person I ever saw yeah. on our show. Yeah. And then he came back and he was depressed and it was it was not funny. <laughs> 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 I've interviewed a However, lot of comedians. It's, it was too. given an opportunity for you to be funnier than you've ever been, just the fact that the way you react in his show. But Tom Segura is really funny. He was on my show. He was Tom, the worst guest I ever had. Tom Segura, yeah. Because he was not funny. Yeah. But I mean, like Burt Kreischer, always funny. Right. Like always funny. Yeah, he's just a funny guy. It just depends on the person. Right. And and like Adam Carolla is just he's not as funny on, in an interview, but he's really funny in stand up. So. I don't know. It just depends on the person. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, so my after dark show, which I do at uh, your mom's house with, I do it now with Christina P, Tom's wife. Before I was just eating, interviewing comedians. That was sort of Christina's idea that she, oh, comedians are so sick. They're so broken. They're so traumatized. We got to get in and see what's going on. And guess what? I found the same thing in almost every case. Which and then you traumatized of, them some more. No, I just found a lot of horrible trauma that they were, you know, that, that made comedy and the, the sitting up in the stage and speaking your mind and, and, making an audience laugh and i really saw one one piece of insight that i found that what i thought was interesting they liked killing an audience they like destroying an audience and that's an aggressive impulse i mean those words are chosen they're meaningful words they they like to they see an audience killed by their words and their and their point of view it's a little different than a, than it's like a rock star who wants to see them engage, you know, mm -hmm. communion with comedians want to kill the audience, mm -hmm. and and that's some of their leftover trauma and stuff, and they're all very attuned to it and they know about it, and they but because of it, it 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 hooked them on comedy. They first, I always ask a lot of them, what was the first you know time you fell in love with comedy? And they all had a moment. Just this moment where just like, well, that was it. That was going to be my Well, there, there's a high when people are laughing at your jokes it, and you're, it, you're it, getting it, that reaction it from is. The, the audience. You're like, oh, I'm feeling this. You, you're right. It is. And it's a communion and it's it's they love me kind of thing. But it's a little different like than what a singer or an actor gets because comedians want to kill. And, and I think I think there's something different about that for what the comedian's getting out of uh out of that relationship. But anyway, that's my two cents on that. Now we just do Christina P and I looking at horrible videos. That's all we do. Now. <laughs> I was looking for a comedy coming up in LA and there's nothing there's, I mean, there's the comedy store and the, and improv and stuff like that. But I noticed that there aren't a lot of, most of the comedians are going away because, yeah, because the LA is locked. They down. don't have masks. Yeah, first of all, but, is locked down. but, they, but it's interesting because like, all the venues are kind of shut down in LA and we're Well, that's LA. Spade's going to be in OC's in the next couple of days. He's so. in the uh, right. Yeah, OC's the good. Open, I saw right? Ali Wong's going to be down there Ooh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's go. Well, it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but yeah. um she's going to be in Irvine. But yeah, the OC is open, but but it there was an article about the big venues like concerts and stuff like that. They're just they're just not happening here. In, in California. Yeah. Well, yeah, California yeah. has been a. It, well, I, in the concert we went to at the Smoothie Center, Smoothie King Center, which mm -hmm. was a funny name, um, was rebooked. It was actually canceled and then they had to, they, they brought it back on Halloween weekend. So that's why they had such a full house. But it was really great. It was great to be in a huge crowd like that and to not have to wear a mask and laugh. It was awesome. And Chappelle went on last? Yes. And how long did Rogan do? I think it was like 30 minutes. It was right? a little more than that. I think it was 45 minutes. minutes. It was close. It's felt, I started thinking it was going to be an hour. It didn't seem that long because there were four of them. Yeah, so yeah that's a lot. That's a stacked lineup. Yeah, but it, it went till like midnight. 
Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, it just kept going. And it was funny. And how they long was Chappelle on for, would you say? He was on for an hour. He was oh, he was. Hour, yeah. I wasn't timing it. Actually, he too, he, he clipped it a little bit. We, we, were, we I was I was sitting backstage with Tom Segura and, and Joe Rogan. And we were, we thought, God, he's got another 15 minutes. And Tom all of a sudden goes, no, I think he's wrapping up. Yeah, because he and was getting drunk up there. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting drunker and drunker. And we're like, oh. He's, he's, <laughs> he's such an interesting guy. He is, yeah, it's fun. What do I feel? What, 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 is, do I, what is that what is sound? That That's the dog. No, there's like somebody it's pounding. Like pounding. You hear that? Yeah. You guys have ghosts? Go, Susan, go out on the balcony. Oh, God, there. the ghosts are here. Go out on the balcony <laughs> and see what that is. That's a very strange sound. Yeah. Honey, weird. go out there and check out that terrible <laughs> sound. <laughs> I got to stay in front of the camera scary. here. It you sounds like something look. awful. It might be, you know what? Sometimes the crows jump on our. No, no, no. This no? was like this, is like, tra like trash, trash can lids. Off. Trash can lids being pounded together. Well, let me look at my ring. I'm not going to go out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to use this, this app on my phone. This is the uh, advantage of a to live streaming show. see if somebody's show. got a gun out there. Speaking of Chappelle, he, told, he had a whole bit on how his wife bought him a gun. Yeah, because he's getting, he's, he is upset about all that's being said about him. He's, he's, he's a sense. His wife's a lot of these more guys upset. Are, these guys are sensitive people. Let, let's talk, let's back up and talk a little bit about the celebrities you've met and stuff and your sort of overall take on them. Is, do you find any generalities about people that, I mean, there's so many different kinds of celebrity these days, but any thoughts about somebody who, who ends up in this position? Is there, one of the things that, for instance, I noticed, I mean, it just started off with my observation, which is, you know, there's, yeah, there's the narcissism and there's this and that, but really the one thing I've noticed is when a lot, a lot of people that are really big celebrities, when you sit down and talk to them with the door shut, it's just sort of a one-on-one. -on -one, I always think to myself, oh, this is a really substantial person. Like there's something substantial about them. I I, I remember when I first, uh, I, I had that experience with Ozzy Osbourne once. I was sitting with him and we were talking about something tender actually. And I, and I thought, oh, but God, this guy is so, he's something substantial about Ozzy. And do you ever have that feeling, Jack Dax? Yeah. I, I, I oh, mean, I, down, yeah. I don't know if substantial is the word I would use, but maybe interesting is the word I would interesting. use. Interesting. Because so, you do a lot of different kinds. But think about the bigger celebrities you've... Like, there's you, just there's something about them yeah. that makes them desirable to watch or to to follow because they're they're just unique in whatever field they're in. And so I would say everyone that we've talked to and we say this all the time we're like we have them on our podcast because they're interesting and it's so true because we will get the interesting facts out of these people because there's something that the world likes about them that's why they're in the position they're in and, and they often have a lot of trauma somebody says you know uh, ozzy came from nothing i just pulled ozzy out of the hat but ozzy had terrible trauma and sexual abuse and all kinds of crazy stuff by the way we had kelly on she was one of our best interviews yeah, substantial right Such but a good but think about think about her substantial person right think oh it's kelly osborne she's so funny she's so cute no 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 no, no. That's a substantial person. By the way, Drew, we got into her 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 weight, her she got into everything yeah. into her yeah. her drug past, everything. Yeah. She she we were the first ones she told about having her her uh, what was it gastric, gastric sleeve yeah sleeve yeah gastric sleeve. Mm -hmm. No one knew about. No one had just asked her. They said she's lost all this weight. She's she's not How eating did she all do? this. What stuff. is her dietary yeah, plan? Yeah. We literally just had her on and asked her. So to, what has been the, the reason that you've lost so much weight? And everyone's talking about. It. She said. Oh, I had a gastric sleeve. Good for She's her. like, no one's asked me. You're the first people to wow. ask me. But she just it. owned it. You know, she didn't hide it. She didn't say, oh, you know, eating just whole foods and just. I, you know. I, all, all, I would say all. I don't know the one that was off camera. What's her name? The, the fifth um, Ozzy Osbourne. Amy, isn't it? Amy, oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't never met Amy, but the, uh, all four of them are. And, and I mean substantial in so many different ways. They're super smart. They have a charisma. This, everything about them is just something about them. Anyway, the, 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 all, Jack, you know, all of them. But anyway, Adam, you answer the question. I would say uh, from my experiences, because I've, I've met pretty much I everybody. Mean, I've met, everybody. I'd say just about everyone. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I don't think there's anybody out there who interviews more celebrities in a day than me just because I don't have a studio. I find them. Um, the bigger the celebrity, the cooler they are. Oprah, awesome. Brad Pitt, awesome. Shaq, awesome. And they're just good to people. Like they're just, they're really nice. And then what I deal from my experience is dealing with like maybe a, a, a C list or a D list. Those are the people I have more bad energy or, mm -hmm. uh, or just kind of, you know, more jerk kind of relationships with. Mm -hmm. And I think, but that shows you why these people have become a list celebrities because they're kind, because they have that quality that they they go up the ranks. People want to be around them. Yeah. People want to help them out. Yeah. And, yeah. And I've heard that over and over and over again. Yeah. Shaq's I've heard that a lot. Those examples where every time I've been with Shaq, 
a lot of times. And every time he goes to a, res a restaurant, obviously he's very recognizable. He's you know over seven feet tall. He's huge. He walks to a restaurant. He shakes everyone's hand. I go, why do you do that? He goes, you, you don't understand. All I have to do is shake someone's hand and they're a fan for life. Not only that, they're going to tell five people saying they met Shaq today and they're going to have a good impression. He's like, I just, it's so easy and I can make someone's day just by shaking their hand. You know who I used to hear that a lot about was uh, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. yeah. You used to hear a lot of stories. Drew shakes like everybody's him. hands. Yeah. I, I, try, I like I like making contact with people. At the people. beginning of COVID, I was like trying to get in there and go, dude. That bothered me. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, you're making me think about people that I've met. That but are, there's some people actually, you know what? Like when I met like Miley Cyrus, like, there was like this X factor in her. Like there's, I, I, and it's you're talking about say. the same thing I'm talking about. There's yeah, like, whatever there's that energy. is. There's yeah. an aura. Yeah. Yes. Tom what is Cruise, that? Miley Cyrus. That's the, the energy right. Energy changes around them. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I've been around them a lot, and you just so feel... let, let's think about it really quick. Do you think that's something innate in that's just that biology of that person, or is it being in front of people for so long that they kind of develops, or is it all of the above? I mean, no, I mean but I'm, I think with like a Miley, that's that she was born with that. Yeah, see, Adam, I but what you're talking about is exactly what I'm talking about. That's that that whatever that is. It's, that, it's confidence. It's, it's, it's I call uh, it yeah. substance. I don't I don't know what else it is because it's it's like because it often includes intellect and thoughtfulness and kindness and all, a lot of stuff. Her whole but family's they don't even like have that. to say anything. Like with a Miley, she could just walk in front of you and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. and I think it's this, like you said, aura around them that is an attractive and, and, and it's, magnetic and, and, aura. And none of the three of us have anything. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I don't think you guys, we have no special anything for celebrities. I mean, you know what I mean, it's just, oh, yes, just you do. No, no, they're just people. You but, guys, you have a lot going for you. You're not average. No, no, no. But listen, but when we, when we approach a celebrity, we approach them because Adam needs to get a story and blah, blah, blah. It's not because, oh, it's a celebrity. It's just they're, they're people and they're, you're in business right. with them kind of thing. But, but Billy even Ray then, walked up, wanted to take us to dinner, gave me his phone number. But. Billy Ray is one of the most <laughs> lovely human beings you'll ever 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 meet that guy's amazing and i and i'm thinking through as you guys mentioned you know how kind and great some of the bigger celebrities are have you ever spoken to anthony hopkins no <laughs> it, it, it will change your life great guy it will change your life just yeah. talking to him great guy very he's very witty he's very on top of things more than you'd think he's uh i talked to him for five minutes i'll never forget it yeah, <laughs> yeah but you I'm needed kidding. a pep talk because well that's right i was sort of down and out at the moment somebody they recommended me to talk to him with this in mind that he's just this incredible positive force and uh i i, I was like moved by the guy just this he's just his presence is incredible all right listen we have um We've gone, we've said it all, to, to quote Howard. You've, you've said it all. <laughs> I, uh, let's go back over where they can get more. Nobody's outside with a gun. Good, thank you for checking. That was the strangest sound, I got to tell you. It's, it's a ghost. It's a guest? It's a ghost. Ghost. Got, oh, it's ghost. a ghost. Uh, I think it's it's something on our, maybe on the like uh, a, I don't know, it's a gun on the roof. metallic sound, it's right? It's a yeah, metal we have a sound. metal. We have a metal fireplace. The, the hood of the fireplace. Oh, or it's something there. inside of the fireplace. Yeah, we were doing a Ouija bats. board outside. We had a huge, <laughs> right before we got in, we, had a, so. we had a huge, like bats this big in our backyard, like Jeez. huge, huge bats. It was the strangest thing. There, We heard this squawking every night on, in this palm tree in the back. And I was out there with the dogs one night and all of a sudden this thing came out. I thought it was an eagle or something at first. And I thought, oh my God, that's a bat. <laughs> Batman. I saw it too. All right. So, and she took pictures of it. All right. So nobody, find the guys. Nobody believed him. All right. So let's go through the particulars. Twitter at Dax Holt. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Twitter, Adam, Facebook, Adam Instagram. Adam Glenn, A-N-B-I-G-L-O-N. A, a D A M G L Y N G L Y N is the last some name. Some love, guys. Uh, follow these guys. Watch the show HollywoodRaw.com. You can also see it on TikTok uh, at Hollywood Raw. I'm going to follow you guys there so I can get little snippets of things, and and that's what drives people back. Do you have his Instagram also? Got Instagram. We got it all. Everything, True. but everything's Hollywood everything. Raw. Everything's Hollywood Raw. Except that what what was it? Bumble. What did you say you have? Uh, Rumble. 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 We're not on a, Rumble or Bumble. Stream. You can stream Isn't your stuff. Rumble. <laughs> Rumble. <laughs> Rumble is a response to all the um, censorship on YouTube, and because there was a lot of it, there's a lot of popularity to Rumble. So there you go. Have you guys hooked up with locals yet? Ooh, we're gonna teach what them is about the, local. What, what is that? Yeah. Like hooked up like with local. Like, I don't know. Like, what's this I know. Thing? We'll yeah. get you. We'll get you hooked up on local. I don't know if my wife is gonna be happy if I'm hooking <laughs> up with locals. It's like Patreon, but it's a it's a you know a place where you go and you meet the other fans and That's everybody cool. intermingles. It's a dating and, site. And then they're also <laughs> connecting out. They just got uh, bought by Rumble. So um, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a reaction to YouTube 
censorship and, 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 and to some extent and too, social Twitter. media censorship you know across the board with during the political times it's more of a right-wing platform but it's not all well right. i don't think there it's are gonna stay that way that's the, it, it had that in it in the beginning and then i think it's just generalizing people yeah that's how it started and, you know when we signed up our pr person said we, it, they were uh q and on and we were like what <laughs> we're like, no, thank I, said, you. I guess we're q and on now no but, thanks um, we have a whole young social media team yeah. we're finding out that's, that's, that's the, the, Dr. the best yeah <laughs> We right. do have a private Facebook page yeah. for our fans. Yeah, this old these, lady teaching you how to do Show these guys media. some love. Thank you on uh, Clubhouse. I'm going to end the Clubhouse from now. We appreciate you guys stopping by. And uh, thank you, John. The dogs stopping. always tell us when the show's over. Yeah, the over. show's over there. They've had enough. Uh, but we appreciate you guys coming in here and uh, christening our new studio with the large three seats and the good sound and everything's going. I, I see properly. that you keep ref not referring to it as your first threesome in your studio. It's the first threesome <laughs> because it is because it is. And, uh, and by the way, I, I just here. called it our, our christening or virginal, you know, sort of. Uh, experience, but you called it a threesome. And you're not wrong. <laughs> and I'm um, going to be tweeting that. Fair enough. Had our first uh, threesome with Dr. Drew today. Show the guys some love. Follow them. Uh, go watch the show. And uh, we have Dr. Anthony Damasio in here on Monday, which is a major, major deal. Don't worry. It's uh, just Amazon. Susan and I have to get to Costa Rica back by then. So wish us luck. It's going to be a very interesting experience. I'm going to go see what goes on in ayahuasca. I can't I'm wait look at wow. to hear about that. I'm excited yeah. for this. Yeah, I'm going to look at that and see what I Yeah, I, I'll obviously take some I go ayahuasca. Are you doing it? I go, you know. No, I'm not oh. doing it. But, I go, and I, but I'm going to see, I'm going to talk to the professionals okay. to do it Sorry and give the them a chance to express what it is they're doing there. Obviously, I have a large skeptic skepticism that it would, with which I enter the frame, but we'll see. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys all for being here, and we will see you on Monday. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor, and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800 273 8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help. Man, after these uh, voicemails, you got something that you're going to do for me that I've been trying to get out of you for a long time, but... I'm not going to suck your dick. Now that... <laughs> it's not going to happen.